Two, three, four. Run up your engines! People always ask me about SUVs. A lot of people ask about the Ford Explorer. So today, I'm gonna analyze a 2013 Ford Explorer with the EcoBoost two-liter, four-cylinder, direct injection engine with turbocharger. Now this is a used vehicle, a custom I just bought. Paid around 15,000 for it. Originally, this car was about $32,000 when it was new. And when we look inside, it's got 65,843 miles on it. Now, as we look inside, it's got all the bells and whistles on it. You can connect your phone. It's got a nice trim. It's protected at one. It's got the dual sunroof set up on it. Controls on the steering column. Pretty comfy seat. Freezing cold air conditioning. And as we look in the back seat, well, we can't get in the back seat unless we open it up. You can see, other than the hair dye in the back seat, <laughs> there's a lot of room back here. It's got the AC system coming out here, so you can set the AC in the back too. And as we check the trunk, got the old automatic trunk stuff. A lot of room inside here. This has the extra seats too. You can fit a lot of people in one of these things. And the seats even come up automatically. So if you're in a hurry, you got them up, you got to load something, fold, and they automatically go right back down. That's handy. The trunk does the same thing. Give it a couple of bangs, it closes itself. Even though this is a four-cylinder car, look cool. It's got dual exhaust. <laughs> now it's what's under the hood that I want to talk about. Under the hood is a two-liter four-cylinder engine that both has a turbocharger on it and gasoline direct injection. That's a little bitty engine on a relatively big SUV. It does put out 240 horsepower. Uses an awful lot of technology to do that though. And this one came in for me to fix because the turbo boost, it would work fine in town, but on the highway, the turbo boost would go out. And man, it was really slow with no turbo boost. It barely got out of its own way. The weirdest thing was when you shut it off and then started it up, the turbo boost worked again for a while. It would stop working when you got on the highway. Now I fixed it, but it took me a while to figure it out. And I'm like the fourth guy who's worked on the thing. In its previous ownership, this thing has had two turbochargers replaced on it and they cost 1300 something bucks just for the park now you could drive it without the turbo but man this thing is really slow when a turbo is not working that's why i personally do not advise people to buy big vehicles with little bitty four cylinder or even three cylinder engines that have turbochargers to bump up the power and gdi injection for all that extra pressure they also wear things out as an example for this one, I just had to put three and a half quarts of oil in the thing. Burning oil, not leaking anywhere. You put these little bitty engines in a big vehicle, people are gonna drive them fast, revs them up higher, the turbo bumps in more pressure, as do the GDI with thousand something PSI pressure inside, they wear out faster. No way would I want a car that had 65,000 miles that just burned through three and a half quarts of oil. Take my old Celica, it's got 240,000 miles and it only burns half a quart of oil every 3,000 miles. This, excessive oil burning. And I see it all the time in these small GDI turbocharged engines as they age. Now as a mechanic's tip, if you do own one of these, change your oil a lot. And I don't mean follow their recommended stuff. Throw that out the window. You can use the new oil that's made specially for them, that 0W16 oil. And I don't care what anybody says, I would still change it every 5,000 miles. I wouldn't wait to 10. Oil is a lot cheaper than engine work. Like this one now, engine's worn, it's burning oil. Can't do anything about it other than add oil or perhaps drive a lot slower so you're not revving it up as high so it won't burn as much. The faster you rev it, the faster an oil burning engine is gonna burn through oil. And higher RPMs, there's more stress and they burn oil faster. I've had customers that had old cars, they drove them around town, they didn't use hardly any oil. But if they take them on the highway and go 80 miles an hour, they'd start burning oil then from the extra pressure. So you wanna buy one of these, I wouldn't advise the four cylinder one. The V6 one's got decent enough horsepower, but the problem with that is a lot of the new ones, they've all gone EcoBoost V6. So you got a V6 engine that's got all that extra turbocharger pressure and GDI pressure. You're still gonna get them wear out faster, but of course the V6 is a bigger engine. It doesn't rev as high, so it won't end up burning oil as quickly as these little four bangers will. But as for the overall vehicle, it's got some pretty common stuff on it. This four cylinder one, it's got the front wheel drive axles up here. 
It's a front wheel drive vehicle. You can see it's not dripping any oil or anything. And when you go in the back, it's got a little independent suspension on the back. There's no drive in the back. And contrary to a lot of them, it has a real dual exhaust. The right side has its own muffler and the left side has its own muffler. And with the 240 horsepower of the GDI four cylinder engine, it has enough power to tow medium loads. And it certainly is a sharp looking vehicle. Got a nice luggage rack set up. You can put a lot of stuff up there if you want. It's got the snazzy wheels front and back and four wheel disc brakes. And we'll start it up, see how it starts up. Starts right up, no problem. Check out the AC. We'll put it on max. That ah, baby's blowing nice and cold. We'll step on the gas from start and see what this little engine can do. It's got a reasonable amount of pickup. It's no slouch. And as we corner, it actually rides quite smoothly. It is a Ford Explorer. They've been upgrading suspension on these things for ages. They're very easy steering. This has electronic power steering. It's adjustable in various ways. You can make it smooth, you can make it tighter. They're a pretty well thought out suspension system. Now we'll take it on a highway and see what it can do. It's taking off pretty good. It's going to 60 pretty fast. Of course you have to realize it's doing that after I fixed it so the turbocharger was giving boost. It had stopped giving boost, but now when you step on it, it takes off which it wasn't doing. All in all, it's a pretty smooth riding vehicle. Now, truth be told, I don't know if this thing actually needed to have two turbochargers replaced in the past. I don't know, that's one problem I find with these EcoBoost GDI turbocharged engines. Is a lot of times, people don't know how to work on it things correctly, and they just throw parts on willy-nilly. Now, as you can hear, they are a relatively loud engine. That's not a quiet engine, but these little four-cylinder GDI engines do have a tendency of being rather loud as they age. And me, I'd rather have a regular V6 engine without all the EcoBoost crap on it myself. Now, you know the truth about this. You can certainly get a good price for one used, as my customer paid less than half what the original price was with 60,000 miles on it. Did have all that work done, and we know it burns oil. I had to put three and a half quarts of oil in this thing. Maybe not the wisest car to buy. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, here's a little bit of good news. Some car insurance companies are issuing refunds because of the pandemic. People aren't driving, they're getting the less accidents, and they're refunding some of the money. You're not doing any road trips, so the mileage driven is way down, and so are the accidents. So far, two companies have stepped up to the plate. The first one's Allstate. They have a shelter-in-place payback where they're translating to 15% payback of your monthly payments. I don't know, that doesn't sound fair to me. If you're not driving at all, why do you only get 15% of your money back? You should get 100% of it back if you're not driving your car at all. You know, a lot of the stuff you gotta face it, it's pretty much of a gimmick. They're acting like they're doing, they're giving you 15% back and maybe you're doing 8% of your driving, they should give you 92% back, but you know, that's not gonna happen. Allstate says you can do it to their mobile app, their Allstate mobile app. They said they're gonna pay back more than $600 million to their customers in the next two months. Well, think about it. If they're giving a 15%, that means they're giving back $600 million. That means they're still making an awful lot of money. <laughs> The other one is American Family Insurance. They're giving you a one-time $50 payment for each vehicle you have insured, you know? <laughs> Ooh, that's gonna go a long way, right? They're not counting a bunch of stuff. Cycles, campers, personal trailers, motorhomes, things that normally sit all the time anyway. So, you know, they're giving back a tiny little bit, but really, not all that much. They're trying to make it look like they care, but that tiny amount of money that they're giving back, that's infinitesimal compared to what they're taking in. now. This is basically all happening because some of the consumer groups have been nagging at the insurance company to say, hey, you need to start giving people money back. So they've offered this pittance so far, and it's only two of them that are offered. <laughs> PR that people throw out. I mean, can you imagine if you're using your car 10% of the time now and they're giving you a whopping 15% off or a one-time $50 payment? I mean, pff, they're still making a lion's share of the money because they're not making hardly any claims that people aren't driving at all. That's the way it goes these days. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.